Hi guys, thank you for visiting my YouTube channel. Happy Visas, my name is Philip Port. And today I'm answering a common question that I often get asked. What happens when I get to Heathrow Airport or I get to, to, to Gatwick Airport or if I'm in Belgium, I get to immigration control because it's actually in Belgium or in, in, in Dover, or it's in Calais. So often you'll not get across the channel. Um, you know, the immigration is often held there. Um, but what are the questions, let's say you fly into Heathrow Airport or Gatwick and, and you, you're at immigration control, what are the questions I, I might get asked? Now let's say you need a visa, you're going to be asked one set of questions and if you don't need a visa, it's normally a little bit strict if it's your first time or if you've been before and you've spent a long time um, because you don't need that visa. You know, when you've got a visa, they've already done all the checks and, you know, so the first time it's normally welcome to the UK, Mr. Port, if it was myself, um, have a nice trip. Um, but yeah, but if, if you, like, so let's say you're from America or, um, Americans overstay by the way, uh, biggest overstays because they don't need a visa. Same with Australians. Um, they overstay the, the, the duration of stay in the UK quite a lot. So they're going to be asking, first obvious question, why are you coming to the UK? Make sure you've got a good reason. You know, make sure you've got an itinerary if it's tourism. You know, you know, something you can show them if they ask, well, I'm going to visit, you know, Madame Two Swords, I'm going to visit Windsor Castle, I'm going to go down to Shakespeare. Make sure you've got a plan of what you're going to be doing. Uh, they, they might ask to see your return ticket. Very, very important. Um, they want to see that you're leaving the UK. Now, let's say you're a backpacker and you're just traveling around. Make sure you've got an onward destination, say then to France, and just explain, look, I'm a backpacker, I'm taking six months out or three months, I'm going to be back in, backpacking the world. Hence, I've only got a, a ticket onto my next destination. But make sure you have that. It's very important. Uh, make sure you've got suitable accommodation you know you've got a hotel booking um you know you've got a place to stay um now obviously if you look nice and you you, you know you meet the right age bracket and you're in a business suit normally it's right through you know some other individuals who you know look like they might be coming to work in the uk um overstay in the uk they're going to be interrogated so they do profile that's my point they do profile they are going to look at you um, and, and see who you are. Um, now, re remember that they can bring up your application. Let's say you applied for a visa, they can bring up that information. So on your landing card, you know, make sure it corresponds with what you've put in the in the letter. If you, for example, common mistake. Um, I'm not saying a lot of people get caught out on this, but people have when they investigate further. Oh, Mr. Pod, you never said you had any family or friends in the UK. And now on your boarding car, you're putting down that you're staying with family. Um, instant deportation. And when you apply for the next visa, you'll be given a 10-year ban. So be very, very careful on that. Um, you know, they are going to bring up your old application, um, you know, that you completed to get the visa. But saying that, because the Home Office have already done you know, the due diligence on you, they've already checked that you've got a job, checked that you've got um, everything in order. Normally, you, you you know, you'll get through a little bit quicker. Um, you, you know, it would be unfair to, you know, make you go through the visa process, supply all them documents, and then all of a sudden uh, you, they deport you or turn you back at the airport. Now, you know, saying so that, if you, if you don't need a visa, um, you, you know, maybe it might be a good idea if you've got limited travel history. If you don't have a lot of travel history, maybe it would be a good idea uh, to bring an employment letter or a pay slip or a few bank statements. So, you, you know, have it in a little file just in case they ask for it, they ask to see it. Um, I've had clients who don't need visas, you know, coming from uh, certain Central American countries and they've arrived and because they've never had any travel history um they, they've sent them back and then they've applied for the visa and, and that was refused as well unfortunately um you know they didn't come to me obviously uh, just because they didn't need a visa they they just thought they could travel there and then they've arrived at the airport no return ticket 
uh, no evidence how they've met the, the person inviting them. Um, in this instance, it was the girlfriend in, inviting him um, to the UK. Um, they let him into the country for a day, and then the next day they put him on a flight, um, you know, back to Central America. So, yeah, th these are the, you know, the common pitfalls. You've got to be a little bit careful of that, I'm afraid. Um, so just to recap, you know, if you've got a, a hotel booking or invitation, evidence that you've met, a Visa or MasterCard or American Express, perfect. Something to show that you can pay for the trip. A little bit of cash. Um, you, you know, if you've got a, a letter or something that for a business card, actually beautiful. If you've got a few business cards, bring them. Just show that you just show them. Are you working in America? Or are you working um, in Australia? Just show them your business card. Um, you, you know, you should be okay to get into the the UK. Um, now, if you've been to the UK and you spent six months and then you've left the UK or they're going to ask you a lot of questions. You know, it's a, it's a myth that you can't go uh, a second time. You are allowed to go for a second period of six months. Uh, that, that is an old wife's tale. You know, you can only spend 180 days out of 365. No, you can, you know, you can go in for 180 days, leave the country for a couple of days, but they don't like it. And you've got to give a, a very, very good reason. Um, if they pick up on it, I'm not saying they'll pick up on it, but quite often they do. So if you if you spend too much time in the UK on frequent visits, um, you, you know you it could have been because you needed medical treatment, unexpected health problem. Make sure you've got the doctor's report. Make sure you you've got evidence of why you spent. Just in, I wouldn't be volunteering that. I wouldn't volunteer it. But if, if they start to ask you, make sure you have it. Um, so yeah, that's what I, I see a lot of people getting caught out on. That they, they they make the UK their home with frequent visits, and the third or fourth time they go there, then they start to have problems. Guys, I really hope you liked this video. If you did like this video, please please subscribe. Please please press the like button. Uh, please share with your friends. Uh, much appreciated. It. Thank you guys. And if you need an immigration advisor, I'm here. Please uh, contact me. Um, thank you very much.